goody guys welcome back to wine down with books with your girl k as you can see by the title we are reviewing book one of the cartel series all right as you can see i have water i'm not drinking any wine for the next month or so because i'm on the cleanse anyways but yes guys so shout out to those who recommend this book so a lot of people actually recommend this book um the three people that i remember though i know it was Juicy Key, Brianna A, and I believe it was Mashley. I could be wrong about the last name. I wrote it down somewhere. But for sure, I know Juicy Key and Brianna A recommending this book. I appreciate y'all. Let's just jump right into it. Nothing but to do it. Page one, the prologue of the book. First of all, the book started of juicy as hell. <laughs> It started off with Carter Diamond, right? So Carter Diamond is a notorious drug dealer. And he is on trial for racketeering. He is on trial for uh, money laundering, fraud, a whole bunch of other things, right? So at, and at the time of the book, at the time of the book, they trying to do the verdict if he's guilty or not guilty. Everybody knew that he's about to be not guilty who was in the courtroom because my man paid the judge off. He kidnapped um, the juror's family member, so not guilty, right? The not guilty verdict came comes through. He shined this down the third, showing his diamond that he stepped in front in front of the courthouse. Next thing you know, he just pull up, start shooting everywhere. Da -da -da -da. So his family is there. So he has a daughter named Breeze. He has twin sons named um, Mecca Monroe, aka Money. His wife is. His wife, Taryn, is there. His right-hand man, Polo's there, right? So everybody outside the courtroom, niggas start getting shot. Boop, 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 shooting everywhere, right? So innocent bystanders are, are laid out on the street. So next thing you know, a cop comes up to Carter was like, yo, I can get your family to safety. So at the time, Carter was shielding his wife and daughter. So he trusts, at the time, he's like, he don't trust cop, but he trusted this cop. And that was his own fault. So anyway, they go to the cops, the, the squad car, Carter talking to the, the cop or whatever. Next thing you know, the cop shoots him right in the head in front of his wife and daughter. Now he's dead. So the cart, the head of the cartel done, done fell down. Damn shame. That was some juicy shit, though. I gave it to them Haitians. They don't play. They don't play. So now... From that timeline, you, you already know I have my notes. All right. All right. So the reason why he had beef with the Haitians is because the Haitians wanted to take over his territory. And, you know, Carter being Carter, he didn't want to give up. He wasn't going to buck down to nobody. So that's why the war started. So now we're going to move on. So now I'm going to introduce you to um another member of the family. So now... You know, everybody's planning the funeral, and everybody's sad, everybody's crying. They don't know what to do. The head of the cartel just, just collapsed, right? So now people have the energy where they're going to test the cartel. But at the, um at Carter Diamond's funeral, you know, he he lived a lavish lifestyle, He so he was gonna, he was going to go out lavish. So Taryn, the wife now, we were, before the funeral, we're introduced to uh, Carter, right? Another Carter. Mm -hmm. We just, but he's called Young Carter in the video. So Taryn has sent a, a letter to him like, I know you didn't know your father, but your father's dead. I would like for you to come to the funeral. So Carter now grew up in Flint, uh, Michigan, Detroit, whatever you want to say, uh, with his mother, right? So I'm, th I'm thinking like, damn, now that uh, the Carter Diamond is dead, we going to find out he got a bastard child? Like, damn. Like, damn, his family thinks so highly of him. I'm like, see, it's always dumb. But all is not what it seems, y'all. So at the funeral, Carter's questioning himself, like, why I'm pulling up? Why I'm pulling up? I ain't know the man. He ain't do nothing for me, this, that, and the third. You know how that go. So everybody's at the funeral. Next thing you know, four Haitians, four Haitian dude come, come into the funeral. So Carter back in um Flint whatever is a drug dealer himself he's he's a ruthless killer he don't play that he's he's just, he but he's a stand-up guy so he he came into the um the funeral with his with his gun um everybody else left the gun is in the car because 
they felt like you know the Haitians weren't going to do anything show up at the funeral they wanted to respect the church um and you know they felt they were to protect it because of the cartel next thing you know the Haitians go up to front with a casket that they kicked my man Carter Diamond out the casket I'm like oh the disrespect so my man body rolling like so Breeze, his daughter is, in, is crying. The Haitians trying to grab her. Carter going to full mode like, yo, I recognize Breeze from the picture. That's my sister. He shoot at the Haitians, whatever. So shit get real at the funeral. Anyway, I go back to the house now. Um, Carter, Carter follows to the young Carter follows to the house. Um, and then you know Mecca is a hot headed twin where Monroe is the more mellow twin. And then basically. They say, like, you know, Carter's your brother. So, Mecca, like, F out of here. That's not my brother. Breeze is in shock. Monroe's, like, you know, all right, whatever. Because Car young Carter looks just the splinter image of his father. And mind you, I forgot to mention this part. Young Carter is older than everybody. At the time, he's 25, right? So, technically speaking, he was there first. He, so, he's not a bastard child, all right? So, now, Polo... Carter Diamond right hand man is basically telling Carter like, yo, I need you to stay in town. Your family needs you. Carter's like, nah, why I'm staying here for? They don't know me. I don't know them. I only came here to um show my respects. Uh, so you know, get at me. And then Mecca was running off at the mouth, trying to trying to um size him up. And then Carter was trying to hold his composure because he know like everybody's going through something. That's his brother. So Carter goes back. <clears throat> to the um his hotel room he make his little drug deal while he's down there as well right let me pause and make sure i'm at the right the right spot right Woo. all right so now then um the next day polo go to carter's hotel room you know because polo already know like the family need carter to leave them like you know, Monroe is very smart, but he's going to take over the real estate business. While Mecca, he's not in no position to run a business. And Bree, she was sheltered her whole life, spoiled her whole life. So, you know, she's out of the question. So when he go to the hotel room now to talk to um, young Carter, he, Carter, young Carter's like, you know, I'm not, why should I stay here? I didn't know the man. The man never did nothing for me. So now Polo broke it down to him like, yo, he never missed a birthday. He never, he never missed a football game. That BMW that you was driving, your father bought that. The the house you was living in, your father bought that. The clothes that you was um wearing, your father bought that. Your mother, he said your mother worked as a it was a CNN making thirty thousand a year. You never wondered how she was able to live a lavish lifestyle and provide for you. She never had to work. He was he was there for you. He loved you daily. It's just that the reason why that he couldn't be in your life because he was protecting you and your mother because you guys could have been killed so polo breaks it down to like this so young carter and um young carter right his mother and his father they were together when um his mother was 15 and uh carter diamond was 17 so you know she and at the time they was young young love or whatever the girl got pregnant with young Carter. So, Carter now, like, he didn't know nothing about the pregnancy or nothing. He wanted to go, he went up to college, and at college, he met Taryn, his now wife. Taryn's father is Este, Amelia Estes. He was a, he was, is, still is, whatever you want to call it, a notorious drug dealer. So, basically, when he had left um young Carter's mom behind after, you know, he, she young, what could they do, right? So... When he got with his now wife, Taryn, the father was like, if you break her heart, you're going to have hell to pay. So it just so happened that, oh, I forgot how exactly it happened, but it happened where the mother had came, had um, reached out to Carter Diamond and told her like, yo, I have a child, he's your son. And at this time, you know, He's around, at, he had to be like four or five at this time. So she held a pregnancy from him. So that's not his fault. He had no idea. But once he found out, he moved him out the hood. And he, uh, young Carter had a good life. But at the end of the day, you know, young Carter didn't grow up with a father. So he turned to street life. You know, a parent could do as much as they can do to protect their child and raise them right. But a child makes their own path. For sometimes, not all the time. 
but sometimes a child makes their own path, right? So that's how he got into the street life. So now, now that he knows this information, he's like, damn, taking back, like, this man really, really did for me. But he, he was trying to play it off like, all right, even then, you know, a man does whatever they have to do to protect their protect they child and to be in their child's life. And he never raised me. And then, you know, back and forth. At the end of the day, if Carter was to step in young Carter's life, y'all would be dead. So I would take that as a win. I understand Grover is still a little bit of resentment or whatever. But listen, <laughs> I'm alive. I'll drink to that. Y'all drink too. So now, where we at? All right. So after um hearing all that, Polo leaves. Um, Carter decides that he's going to go to the casino. He get he goes downstairs to the casino. He's gambling. He got money to gamble away. I wish I had money to gamble away like that, but I don't. So he's at the little craps table with the, the, the little dice and whatever. There he start rolling. He hitting big. My man is winning. Next thing you know, a fine little bitty. No, this stop. <laughs> a fine woman pull up next to him, right? So he's taken back like, damn, she's beautiful. She got the, the way that like, she carried herself with pure confidence. It, it was attracted to him. Next thing you know, she was losing all her money at the crab table, but he he was just watching her. I'm like, damn, that's a little creepy. Like, at least say hi. So they, at the, then he start talking to her. They start flirting around a little bit, you know. Um, and I'm like, sign, sign ain't right, but I'm, you know how some females can be. They they see people winning big, and they trying to stroll over. I can't, I can't knock your hustle, baby. So she um she doesn't tell him. Her name, he doesn't really, he does, he, his name is actually tattooed on the side of his neck. Why? I don't know. I know you know your own name. But anyways, so yeah, so she ends up um telling him uh, later that, that night that, you know, she didn't come by herself. She's, um, <clears throat> she's here with her girls. Sorry, guys. She's here with her girls. So next thing you know, they, she leaves, her girls leave, right? Her big sister is is with um Mecca, which is young Carter's brother, in a car, giving him head, doing all that, right? So she's a part of this group called, called the Murder Mommies, and they they kill men, women, children. They have no principle, no morals, no nothing for money. They ruthless ass females, and I'm just like, Hoop. so Carter doesn't. And at the, I should say this: Carter doesn't even know that his brother Mecca is in the casino that night. So. While Mecca and Anissa is in the car driving to Carter, I mean, well, sorry. While Mecca and Anissa, which is uh, Mia Moore's older sister, driving to Mecca's hotel room, the other two girls are, are telling him. They end up losing losing uh, Mecca and Anissa in traffic or whatever, whatever. So when they get to the hotel room, you know, Anissa is panicking, like, you know, where's my girls? Where's my girls? They're supposed to be here. Becca already know what's going on because she had went into the bathroom. She had sent the text to say which room she in. When she came out the bathroom, Mecca's watching her. Next thing you know, he basically told her, like, I know what you, I peeped game. You think I didn't see the girls follow you? They start tussling and fighting. Next thing you know, Mecca pull out the strap, shoot her in the chest. So Mecca dip out the room. When they get downstairs, they see Mecca leaving. Mia Moore sees that her sister, her big sister is dead. Um, and she's broken hearted, right? So the bird of mommies was hired by Matty. Matty is the, the Haitian, um, leader of the, of the Haitian drug game. And he had put the hit out on, um, the cartel. So he's the one who put the hit out on Carter Diamond and the whole family. So now she's like, it's not even about the money no more. It's about revenge. So now she's seeking revenge on her sister's death. But my thing is like, I don't, I don't, that part I wasn't understanding. Like, you already know the type of game that you in, right? So, you, at any time when you go do a job, you already know that it's no guarantee that you coming back. So, now you mad that your sister got got for the, by the man that you was trying to get? Like, how are you mad? It's a casualty of the war. She, now she mad. What you mad for? You about to kill him and you kill, what's killing his family? Like, what's going with you? But anyways... So now she's on a revenge streak. She 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 realized like she got she want to kill Mecca. So now that's that's murders on her mind. Murders on her mind, right? Pause there. Okay. Okay. All right, so boom. 
so now after after all that I had a couple days have passed and then carter this young carter decides that he wants to go visit his father at the cemetery um for the simple fact that he he needed he wanted to say like he forgive him he for everything and he you know he loved him whatever so at the cemetery he see mia moore again um mia moore is visiting her sister they 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 you know they decide to converse but they both of them don't te don't say who they dare to um, meet because they both, you know, they both got secrets. They can't say their profession, you know, and that's that. So Carter, young Carter, I'm I, Carter, young Carter is always on his A game. So, but he, for some reason, it's just something about me and more for me and more something about young Carter. I'm like, all right, you know, that connection be real. So then there at the cemetery me and maud finally decides to tell you know young young carter her name and then they start you know conversing um and all that so again we fast forward a little bit you know drama's going down everybody's you know mourning the death of the lost ones right they the lost ones their loved ones <laughs> so now um you would think i would ha i had some wine right this is i just be naturally high but anyways so now, Carter decides that he's going to take Breezy, his sister, out. She's 19, by the way, um, because she's been locked up in the house and she wants a sense of normality. She wants to go shopping and he, she doesn't want to go with bodyguard. So Carter decides to take Breezy. Um, they go shopping. Next thing you know, they end up at her restaurant. So the father bought Breezy a restaurant when she was 10. My daddy ain't do that for me. Shit. Well, now we stop. <laughs> but anyways, when they get to the restaurant, who does he see at the restaurant? He sees um me and more. Me and more is there with her girls. Um, the girls see uh see Carter and um Breezy. So at the time, she doesn't know who uh Breezy is. So she eyeing Breezy down, and Breezy like, you better go tell your your you know your girl that I'm your sister before she start getting crazy. So Carter walk up to to me and Mo, stunting and all that talking, and then me and Mo playing herself like, yo, you I didn't know you had a girlfriend. Tell your girlfriend stop looking at me for it's a problem. So Breezy walk up like, hey bro, you know mom, we gotta go call mommy something like, along that lines, and then. Me and Mo is stuck on them. And then Carter just walked away. When he walked away, he left a note with the waitress. The waitress or hostess, whichever one she was, like, gave her this letter. Basically say, meet me here at this time. We're going on a date. Me and Mo all flattered, like, Ooh. So she's known, me and Mo is known to be cold-hearted. She locks her feelings away. So now that she meets Carter, she's open. Like, she's going through emotions and feeling things that she hasn't felt ever. She's only, and she's actually only had sex with one guy so you know men she don't mess with men she just kill him so yeah so now all right <clears throat> so then is there after young always shaking the camera so then is there after young car decides that he's going to take over the cartel he goes back to uh no sorry he don't go back yet he decides that he's gonna leave detroit for good because he can make more money in miami where that's where the uh the family is based at right all right so we're gonna pause with young carter now we're gonna go to mecca mecca is the hot-headed twin so mecca is um in an on again off again relationship with lena right so lena is like a she's a, a pretty woman but she she's very high 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 and mighty, high strong, um, and she likes to find things in life, but Mecca, though, he cheats on her, he don't treat her good, the way he talks to her is crazy, so she's just like, you know, like, what the hell, she don't, she's, and she's low-key, um, having sex with her, his twin brother on the low, right, She's been, she known Mecca for, since they were younger, but she always, she she loves both of them. Mecca is the hot-headed one where Monroe is the, the love, like, you know, the one who's very compassionate, empathetic, who would cater to her knees while Mecca is just the one that's going to put in work and some shit really go down. But don't underestimate Monroe. Monroe put in work too, but he, he has self-control. He, he's able to regulate his emotions where Mecca is a hothead, right? So now... Shit, shit just, shit just get real. So, this is where stuff start, start going down. 
So Breezy um, decides that she's going to celebrate her birthday in the club, right? So they're in the club. Lena's there. The whole family is there, um, you know, celebrating, gyrating, and everything. Next thing you know, uh, Lena's dancing with a dude. It's innocent. Monroe is there watching Lena dance. He's he's low key in love with Lena, but he already know like he he betrayed his brother by sleeping with his girl. But it's, so he's gonna fall back. He's just gonna continue having sex with her, but he's not gonna pursue a relationship where Lena wants Monroe to be like, yo, I'm I'm pursue I'm uh I'm sleeping with your girl. I love her. I want you to fall back. You know, I want to be with her. But, you know, he's not going to do that to her brother, his brother. You know, he already broke one by him. That family over everything in his mind, right? I don't know how. Family over everything still playing when you mess with your brother, girl. But that's that. So, Mecca sees that she's dancing with a dude. She, he gets all crazy. Confronts thumbs. Hits the dude over the head with a bottle. Everybody's outside of the club. Next thing you know, he hit Lena. Um... He's now he starts feeling bad that he hit Lena. Like, oh my god, just hit her. He loses his damn mind. He he reacts before he think. And so Monroe decides to drive Lena um to her house while young Carter takes Mecca back to his crib. So Mecca is drunk, he's coked up. He does some more coke and then he decides like I need to go apologize to Lena. So he's gonna pull up to the crib, right? He pull up to Lena crib. Next thing you know, Lena and Monroe's kissing, they about to have sex. He got his gun on him. He he starts shooting through the house. He confronts um Lena. He confronts Monroe. Next thing you know, he shoots Lena in the chest. Boop. Two times, I believe. Lena, I'm I'm thinking like, all right, damn, like you just killed Lena, right? Next thing you know, he confront he 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 confront Monroe. Monroe's like, what the hell? He pointing a gun at Monroe. Monroe thinking like, yo, I'm your brother, regardless, you're not gonna shoot me. He shoots Monroe, right? So after he shoots Lena and Monroe, now he he comes to senses like yo, he realized what he did. So now he's crying, oh baby bro, I'm sorry. Now nah, I don't cry. So he knows. Oh, I'm gonna pause right there. I forgot an important part before. I always have a cold when I'm doing a video, yo. So before the the club scene, um, the Haitians have pulled up to the cartel's home right because at the time the uh the cartel had retaliated and pulled up to Matty's home where his daughter his little young daughter she was eight was having a birthday party and Matty was like damn like that's close to home like you you could have killed my daughter so i'm gonna call the truce so Matty had pulled up to the cartel they called the truce so no more bloodshed so everything was good right so now back to the part where uh, Mecca killed Monroe. So now Mecca's trying to get think about his way out of it. So he called everybody up. It's like, yo, um, the Haitians, I pulled up to, to check on Lena and I saw two Haitians guy run out the house. They killed Monroe and Lena. Lying. So in my head, I'm like, yo, do you know the cans and worms that you just opened up? Like, I can't understand. So and at this time, you know, me and Moore and, um, Young Carter, they well acquainted. Young Carter had flew out to Costa Rica, so he got the call about his brother death in Costa Rica, so they had to fly back, right? So now shit is getting real. So now I told y'all, Taryn, Mecca Monroe, Breezy mother, um, her father is Amelia Estes, a notorious drug dealer for the Dominican. They're not really a cartel, but he's Dominican, right? So shit is just wild. So, come to find out, Lena is in a hospital. She survived the shooting. So, Emilio is waiting in the, ho the hos hotel, hospital room for Lena to wake up. Once she wakes up, he asks her, like, yo, what happened? Who shot you? So, she basically said, Mecca. No, she said, your grandson. He's like, what? He like, yeah. She like, yeah, Mecca shot Monroe. Mecca shot me. And then he's like, don't you lie to me, bitch. And then she's like, I'm not lying. The reason why he shot me was because he came to my house. He found out that um, uh, he saw me and Monroe kissing and stuff like that. He killed, he killed, and I'm pregnant. So the whole time she worried about the baby. So she was pregnant, and she's pregnant for Monroe. She actually told Monroe the same the same night that she was pregnant, and you know Monroe was like. You know, we got to abort it. We can't do that to my brother, this, that, and third, right? So that's that. So now the the grandfather's like, yo, what? So he believed her. He basically states like, yo, Mecca is now dead to me. So he puts a hit out on his own grandchild. I can't 
can't blame him. I can't blame him. You feel me? I can't blame him. But so now Mecca got a hit out on him. Um, now they're about to start a war with the Haitians. And stuff is hitting the fan. And I'm just like, damn, like, this all happened within a matter of a couple of pages. <laughs> I'm like, how more juicy can it get? So let me pause right there. All right. Da -da -da -da. All right. So now, right? So the whole family now, um... It has has meeting has met meeting met up at the house and everybody's like you know going through like oh Mecca would never do that to Mara I can't believe that so Mecca pop up his mother was like asked Mecca like did you did you shoot your brother he's overwhelmed with guilt and is like no I didn't shoot him the Haitians did it so they all automatically believe him but the way he's moving you could tell that he's lying but I'm like yeah just quick to believe but I guess you got to give people the benefit of the doubt right so. Mecca ended up going back to his house. Um, he was gonna go on the run for a little bit, and then the, the the Dominican posse come through trying to kill him. He ended up um getting away and um for his grandfather, but he still got a bounty on his head, right? So I'm gonna pause right there. All right, pause right there. So while all this is going down. Polo decides that he's like, it's too much bloodshed going on. Again, if you need a reminder, Polo is Carter Diamond, um, right-hand man. So he goes to meet with Emil Este, you know, to let him know that he wants out of the game and to, to turn the cocaine and the plug over to young Carter because he's taking over the cartel. When he pull up on Emilio now, Emilio's like, yo, I never liked you. I never liked um carter the only reason why i gave carter the plug was for the simple fact that my daughter needed to be taken care of and the only way for him to do that was to you know have his own thing going but now that my grandson is dead he's dead um mecca is disowned by me i'm cutting off the connect um no more product for for the family so polo was like like taken back next thing you know emilio start pissing on polo so polo just sitting there while emilio pissing on him like yo Yo, but I understand why Polo didn't pull didn't jump because he like, you know, had he made a move, he would be dead. But I'm like, either way, like I'm, you did you piss on me. So, anyways, that's that. So now the more me and more um starts falling for uh young Carter, she has she's she has conflicting feelings about killing uh Killing him, cause at the time. Oh, sorry. Pause. 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 I forgot to mention this. Me and more at the time when young, when young Carter and me and more met. Me and more did not know that young Carter was affiliated with the cartel and was affiliated with Mecca. She found out that young Carter and Mecca are siblings at the um at uh monroe's funeral the brother's funeral so then she's like like damn you know so now she's like i gotta kill him so she basically's like you know i gotta kill young carter because I, I but i love him and i gotta kill mecca and i gotta destroy the family so now she's going back and forth battling and her crew is actually pushing her like yo they killed your sister you gotta do this fuck love you never been in love before all of a sudden now you 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 hesitating you never been like this before and we need this money we gotta get this money so she's like she basically decides then and there that she's gonna infiltrate the cartel she's gonna use her love with young carter to um you know, weaken him so she could take him out. But as they grow, she starts second guessing herself, and then the, she starts telling the crew her why she second guessing. They getting on her back, jumping on her back, like yo, you going soft? You gonna let them niggas just kill your sister and this that, and that third? And I'm just like, y'all not thinking logically. You did something. The consequence: your sister died. At the, I, at that point, y'all even right, but that's not how they think, right? And then so now. 
Young Carter still doesn't know anything about Mia Moore's um, sister. He doesn't know that uh, Mecca killed her sister. He doesn't know none of that. He's still in the um, in blindness because he's thinking that you know he's peeling back layers and she he she's a a tough woman, but she, he could love her and get to know her. So he's not he's not seeing what's what's need to be seen. So. Um, after Mecca had run away from the Dominican Deuce, he pulled up on Young Carter. Young Carter actually entered him into a, a rehab facility so he could hide from his grandfather because that's the last place they would look for him, in a rehab facility, right? So now he's safe. He's acting like a little bitch. So now, so through the midst of this, Carter, you know, Carter's like, yo, I need my people with me. So he calls two boys from Detroit to come down to Miami to have his back, which is Zaire and Ace. So he puts um, uh, Zaire and to watch uh, Breezy's back. So long story short, at first he thought that she was stuck up, and then, you know, he started putting her on to game. They had a conversation. They started getting to know each other. Um, he ended up, you know, liking her. She ended up liking him, this, that, and the third. At the same time... Um, Carter decides that he's going to go visit Mecca in the rehab facility. So he goes to visit Mecca in the rehab facility, and he brings um, Mia Moore along. So when he brings Mia Moore along, they're supposed to be going on a date. Mia Moore sees that young Carter is visiting Mecca in the, in the, um, in the rehab facility, and she's like, oh, this is where he's been hiding out. So now, at the same time... Um, Another dude comes out named Fabian. So in the book, the murder mommies was hired to take out Fabian because Fabian raped another um gangster's brother in jail, right? He was he was low key uh gay as well. So and and one of the requests the request was for them, the murder mommies to cut off his penis. So they cut off his penis, but he ended up getting away and he ended up surviving. So he entered the rehab facility to to hide out from the murder mommies. So when me and Moore got into the hospital I mean, the rehab center, she see Mecca, her blood instantly start boiling like she's just determined to kill him. So she go take a seat. She reading a magazine like this. Fabian comes out his room now and sees uh, me and Moore and starts panicking like, yo, he thinking like she's there to finish him off and he starts crying like, I don't want to die, I don't want to die. So he, he army crow back into his room. So young Carter's like, what the hell? So young Carter leaves with me and more. Next thing you know, Mecca pulls up on Fabian like, no, what's good with you? So Fabian puts Mecca onto game like, yo, she, the girl that your visitor was with is a part of the murder mommy. So Mecca's like, what? So he showed Mecca a whole bunch of articles now, and the articles show, show have a picture. So on the picture, it shows me and more. It shows Robin. It shows, I forgot the Alyssa or whatever her name is, and it shows Anissa. Right, so he Mecca sees that the girl that he killed on the on the um in the photo. So he puts two and together like, oh, me and Moore is Anissa's sister, and uh, um, me and Moore is with Carter to take Carter out and to kill him and inter infiltrate everything. So now he starts devising a plan, like he knows what's going on. And I'm like, finally, somebody figure that shit out. So now, at the same time, right, the grandfather took out the Haitians. So the grandfather took out Maddie, Matty. He took out his whole, he took down his whole, whole, his whole organization. He killed, he even killed his eight year old daughter, his baby mama. So Matty had nothing. So Matty now was like, he's hooked on, he's hooked on revenge as well as murder mommies, except for Mia Moore, because Mia Moore had confronted the girls like, yo, no, I can't do this. Um, He has nothing to do with why my sister is dead. Leave it alone. So the girls feel betrayed like, yo, we're going to get this money. We're going to um, revenge Anissa's death with or without you. So the two girls link up with Matthew now and decide that they're going to kidnap Breezy. Um, They're going to request a million dollars in ransom. When they get the ransom, they're going to kill her, right? So... Z again, Zaire is there to protect Breezy, but they end up falling in love. So one night, um, Zaire convinced Breezy to sneak out the room. So they on the beach, they kissing, and, and he eating her out and all that. Next thing you know, he tried to penetrate because Breezy's a virgin. He didn't have a condom. So they run to the 7-Eleven. At the 7-Eleven, he leaves his gun in the car. He tells Breezy to wait right there. So he's not thinking of survival for survival. He's only thinking about getting some, right?
So while he's in 7-Eleven, he sees a fine ass girl. I forgot which one it was. Is it Robin or the other girl? They put a gun to his head. He looks out, see Breezy getting can um push in the back of the um of a Dodge Charger. Uh they leave him in the store, pull off, his tires are slashed, so he can't follow them. Now Breezy is kidnapped by Maxi and the other murder mommies, right? Uh me and Mo again doesn't know any of this. So Zaya's you know, guilt trip and stuff like, damn, I messed up. So they go back to tell to tell Young Carter, everybody looking for Breezy. Matt T and them leave a ransom note, right? So the ransom note is basically like, give the million dollars, meet up with my man, drop the, drop, give him the bag, we gonna release Breezy. But we already know Breezy was never gonna make it out, right? So while Breezy getting kidnapped, she already know that she's, she's not gonna make it and who kidnapped her and stuff like that. So they beating her up this time the third. So now... Young Young Carter told Mecca to stay home with his mom, right? Um, in in the house to watch her because he's a hot head, so he didn't want him coming to the ransom drop. Okay, I'm like, yes, leave his ass home. So they get to the ransom drop. Young Carter was there with Polo. They talking to the the 16 year old dude who pulled the Haitian who pulled up. Next thing you know, Mecca pop up pop up out of nowhere. Put a gun to the head, it's like, yo, where my effing sister at? So everybody's like in shock, like, what the hell are you doing? So the, the Haitian dude already know, like, if he tell, he gonna get killed by Matty. If he don't say nothing, he gonna die anyway. So he decided to have loyalty, and I respect that. So Mecca loses freaking mind, don't even think, shoots the young boy. Word gets back to Matty and the, the girl, the murder mommies that, um, you know, they soldiers that they're not getting the ransom money. So uh the two murder mommies leave Matty and Breezy alone um and told Matty to handle that. But the whole time Matty had Breezy, he looking at her like she's so beautiful, she's for me, I love her, this that, and the third. But and it and that chapter ends with him pointing a gun at Breezy and saying, Good night. So, you know, I'm like, damn, kill Breezy. Damn. I'm like, she was nineteen, she had nothing to do with this, but you know, Everybody's a casualty of war. He's revenging his daughter's death. She also was innocent. So, uh, you know, I can understand that's what happens, right? Six months go by. There's no body for Breezy. Everybody, you know, they've been looking for her, but they stopped looking because they already assumed that, you know, she's dead. So the mother decides to hold a memorial for Breezy because the mother's like, you know, I lost my husband. I lost my son. I lost my daughter. My other me and and Mecca is nowhere to be found. Cause within that six months, Mecca after he shot the sixteen year old, he realized that he sealed his sister faith and he killed her. So not only did Mecca kill his twin, he done fucked up and killed um his uh his sister and he killed his his girlfriend. But nobody at the only person that knows that Lena is alive is the grandfather. The grandfather hasn't said anything because he wants. Uh, leaning to have the baby so there's a another boy here to the throne okay so that's that so now um mecca had one in the run so at the memorial service you know me and more is there the mother's there the mother plans on relocating out westwood polo to leave the game because she's heartbroken and in the book she's strong like she went through so much i'm like she wasn't crying too much and was and she's trying to hold it together but like at this point i'm having a mental breakdown so long and behold Mecca pops up at the memorial, right? So Mecca pops up at the memorial. Me and Moore sees him, and her body language is, is different. She sees nothing but murder in her eyes. Young Carter notices that her mood changes when Mecca enters the room. So Mecca decides that he's going to pull Young Carter aside to talk to him and let him know, like, you know, give him the rundown about his girl. So he starts saying, like, yo, you don't know your girl. You don't know your bitch talking crazy. So Young Carter, he the minute he, uh, Mecca call her a bitch, he starts getting all... Or oh, crazy or whatever. So me and more people in the scene, like he, she don't know what they talking about, but she know that young Carter is ups, is upset. So she go up to Carter now, and Mecca's there. And Mecca, you know, acting all nice, whatever, hand her a wine glass, and they start dancing and whatever. It's tension. Next thing you know, uh, Mecca was like, um, you know. I know who the fuck you are. Uh, me and Mo is like, I know who you are. I'm going to kill you, this, that, and the third. So in the wine glass that he had gave me and Mo, he had dosed it with poison for about 10 people. So he's like, yo, the wine, the wine that you just drank, I dosed it. I'm going to kill you. And she's like, no, the same wine glass you just gave me, I gave it to your mother. And she's dying, bitch. So now his mother on the goddamn floor dying, right? At the same damn time, the feds come through the memorial and arrest Carter, arrest everybody in the drug organization. Carter's like, you know, they went straight for the head boss. How they know? So 
what's going on. So he's like, yo, somebody, somebody snitch it. So now Mecca dips out because now Mecca done got his his brother killed. He done sh- killed, and to his knowledge, he killed his girlfriend. He killed his sister. Now he killed his mama. <laughs> the fuck wrong with Mecca, right? So now Carter's in jail. Me and Moore's on his own, had contacted the lawyer um, on her way to meet to go to the jail to meet Carter. Next thing you know, Mecca pop up in the back of the sea and puts her into her mouth. I forgot what it's called. Um, to, to, to knock her out. They end up getting in a car crash, tumbling, hitting a brick wall. Mecca now kidnaps uh, Mia Moore, has it tied up in a in a, wherever they was tied up, right? So he takes a chain, starts cutting her with it, cutting her with it, cutting her with it. He dosed her body in, was it, um, uh, kerosene, and then, you know, he beating her, punching her, this, that, and the third, right? So, at the same time, he's like, you know, I'm not going to kill you, bitch. He tortured her for hours. Next thing you know, Fabian comes up behind him because she was prepared to die. She, she thought Fabian was the devil because his his um silhouette was a shadow. He comes up and is like, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fucking kill you. So, he started punching her, he start punching her, broke her jaw, right? So, that's that. And before the, the chapter end, it also goes into that Breezy is actually alive. So this fucking Matty now um, kidnapped Breezy and took her back to Haiti, right? So they in the, the middle of a, um, on a mountain, the secluded area, nobody could hear. He kidnapped um, Breezy because he believed Breezy is his to have. She's beautiful. He wants her to be um, his wife. Um, he rapes her, takes her virginity. He and, and hits her and all that. She realized, like, yo, she's never going to escape. No one can hear her. Um, and then, you know, the chapter ends that chapter ends like that with Mia Morgan beat by Fabian. Breezy is crying and realizing that she's never going anywhere and she's now Matty's slave. He's a dirty, low-down dog, sick puppy. And I'm like, damn. <laughs> and that's just book one. I'm enjoying this read so far. I I I love urban fiction, um, but it, it's just the book started off juicy. It's now getting juicier, and I need to know what's going on. Oh, I I, I forgot this part. The um, so the feds. Let me tell you what happened. So the feds was called because Ace, um. Young Carter's right hand man snitched on the organization. The reason why he snitched on the organization is because the uh, he got pulled over with two kilos of coke and they they cut him a deal. And I thought he was a real one, so that's how the um the feds was called. Nobody knows that Ace snitch at this time. The only thing that they um that Zaire was feeling that Ace was moving funny um since they've been in Miami, but. That's you know that's a part of that we're gonna find out in book two. So what I'm gonna do is I'm because the cartel series uh Tyre Mel told me is like eight books. I'm gonna break them down book one, book two, you know book the the videos. Um we're gonna go from there. But I'm loving it so far. It's juicy. I had to make this video before I got into book two because I didn't want to mix the the scenes up. Um but I I love it. I, Thank you, everybody who suggested the book. I appreciate it. Um, everybody else who dropped book recommendations in my previous videos, I went back and I I wrote on everybody who requested a book for those who I missed. Beastly Z, I got your recommendation. Miss Ashley, I got your recommendation. So everybody who recommended a book, I now have all of them. I'm going to purchase the books. I'm going to read them. And you ain't right, know I'm going to drop a video. So continue to um you know like share subscribe thank you for all the support continue dropping your comments i appreciate all the love i'm humbled i, I thank you guys for continually continually watching my videos and until next time guys your girl is out